always hotter. Testing out the Brooks Ghost 11s with a sock that has a little more friction to it. Remember yesterday it felt a little slick? So these are smart wool socks for my three mile warm up before the next threshold run. Uh, so anyway, it'll be interesting to see how the smart wool pairs with the Brooks Ghost 11. All right, lacing up, going to Wash Park. Good old, uh, good old threshold ever. You can probably uh, hear the wind in the microphone. It's a little breezy today and that's all right. Just gotta work a little harder, work a little harder. All right, three mile warm up. I'll be right back. There, there we go. Three mile warm up in the Brooks Ghost 11s. Not as slick today. So I, I'm thinking the socks are gonna help. Still a little bit, but not too bad, okay. It's getting a little more serious, ladies and gentlemen. A nine mile threshold today, and I'm increasing the volume of the thresholds. The last one was two weeks ago. Really glad I discerned at the beginning of the training block to make them every two weeks, so just twice a month. And basically, uh, two days ago, I was at this exact same park and was able in the 5K race to, to average 455 per mile. So now the goal is to go at least 520 a mile. So I have basically, 20 to 25 seconds to quote unquote play with, meaning I want to be relaxed, as relaxed as possible in this effort. I want to hit those splits, but I also don't want to be digging. I just, you want to, in threshold runs, you want to approach difficulty, but you don't want to push through. Like in that 5K, that was difficult toward the end of it. So anyway, exact same course. Uh, it is supposed to be hot today, so about 80 degrees. So I, I have bottles I'm going to put out along the way. And then uh, we are going to take out the turbos today and the Solomon socks. Um, I was thinking about the Skechers Razor 3s, but I decided against them because after they're over 100 miles now and they are the Skechers Razor 3s, they are feeling a little uh, lifeless, if you will, a little dead. Uh, so we're going to take out the turbos today and with that Zoom X foam and see how they do. Um, so let's lace up and get going. Oh, nine miles threshold. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be just nice and relaxed. Just relax, float it through, float it through. Nope, nope. Nine mile threshold was not meant to be today. I tried. All right, basically I called the workout early. I went, I think I went like three, three and a half miles and basically I was going from 515 per mile to about 530, 535 and based on the effort and then looking down at my watch, looking at the pace, I knew this effort doesn't feel right. I should be going faster given how hard I'm pushing. And so in my mind, I'm thinking I raced a 5K, it's not a 50K, I can recover from a 5K. Well, a 50K, you're not running five minute miles or sub five minute miles. So lesson learned for me as I come back in distance to remember, even though the race might be shorter, the intensity is probably going to be higher, which means your legs need to recover. And so a little bit of a mistake on my part, I should have basically taken three, four, maybe even five days before attempting this nine mile threshold run. So anyway, I called it. I'm really, really proud of myself. I feel like I'm getting a little wiser as I get older, like knowing when to listen to the body. It's so critical as runners, as we're striving for, you know, PR is like, we want to train hard. And remember, remember what I said two weeks ago, fitness versus freshness really comes down to timing. And I think timing within a training block leading up to a peak race is often overlooked and i think i personally believe that peaking for a race is an art form and we've talked a little bit about this in the past but it's an art form to make sure and this is the beauty this is this is it to make sure we arrive at that starting line as fit as possible while being as fresh as possible there you go we just talked about this fitness versus freshness, just like two weeks ago, how to run faster. We're walking the line, and so again, I'm just excited that I called it, and 
I'm actually intrigued. You know how I said, I don't know, maybe a month ago, like I'm trying not to think about Cleveland too much. I think if you think about a race too much, it can, it can, uh, I don't know, it can uh, not drag you down, but it can kind of overtake you. So I really try not to think about it, but I've been pretty proud of myself. I haven't gone to the Cleveland Marathon website for probably two to three weeks because at the top of the website, it has a countdown clock to race day. So I'm actually excited because I thought about this last week. Hey, maybe I should take a down week, rest a little bit, and then continue on with the training. But I want to see now how many days are to go. Oh, that's nice to see. That's nice to see. We're in the 30s. That's amazing. So 39 days to go according to the Cleveland website, which is, is beautiful. That's perfect because, again, you don't want to peak too early. You don't want to be overtrained. You just want to stay nice and steady, feeling refreshed, ready to rock and roll. So I did not feel refreshed today. I felt tired, and I called it. And so the game plan now is to sleep really well tonight, wake up in the morning, and just hit that reset button. Just take it easy tomorrow, go to bed, and then repeat and repeat until you feel refreshed and until you feel like you can go back out and give a good hard effort, uh, whether it's in a long run, whether it's in a, a workout, uh, a threshold run. But if you just keep digging that hole, things can go south really, really quick. And the three hour rule. All right, this is what I do. This is what I did today. And you can do this at your work as well. You just got to find a spot in your building, in your office building, somewhere where you have a little bit of space. Here it is. Every three hours, if you're feeling run down, overtired, uh, so really, really sore, this is what I do. Roll, stretch, massage and I like to do the massage with some sort of ointment that helps with recovery and then nutrition and then hydrate and then repeat roll stretch massage nutrition hydrate repeat over and over and over again and everybody as soon as I got home today I put the compression sleeves on my calves and they're feeling so much better I can't even and I've had them on for about three hours now I'll probably take them off and then put them back on they feel so, so much better. Like it's what compression sleeves do are they, they draw blood down because it's basically squeezing your calf just a little bit to help draw blood down, to help with that recovery process. So I would, if you don't own compression sleeves, I would strongly recommend it if you're feeling overtired, over sore. And one last point on the training and not digging a hole. This is why I write my training plans in pencil because you never know how your body might react to a different workout, a different race. I kind of forgot today or on Sunday and then yesterday, that was a hard 5k, basically the fastest 5k in 12 years on pavement. That's what I forgot. And you know, lightweight shoes. I just didn't quite take all that into consideration. Like that was a hard effort. I just over, I totally overestimated the effort and the fact that um, I am 33 years old. So I just got to be vigilant of what I'm putting my legs through in these harder efforts. And thankfully, I, I got an email from USATF last night uh, for the half marathon road championships in Colorado are this Saturday. And it is so tempting to jump into that race. I have a feeling I would do well. And no, I cannot do that. I cannot do that. It's like you've got to focus, stay focused on the goal, which is Cleveland, and doing everything it takes to make sure you arrive at that starting line as fit as possible and as fresh as possible. So don't forget, pencil is your friend. And here we go, the winner of the running shoe battle. So basically, I'm going to compare shoes moving forward. And I, I put it out to you guys, I think three or four days ago. And I said, I gave you five options. Well, I won't run through all the options. I'll just give you the top two. First place, this will be the first running shoe battle. The Nike Zoom Fly Fly Knit versus... The Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. That's right. Option B1. Second place was option E. That's right. The Audios 4 versus the Skechers Razor 3. It kind of surprised me. So I'm excited for both of those. We will likely do all of them at some point. But the first one will be the Zoom Fly Fly Knit versus the Turbo. And uh, it's supposed to snow tomorrow in Colorado here in Denver. So I probably will not be doing it in the next couple days. But just stay tuned for that video. The running shoe battles are coming up. And yes, the key word is recovery. And the question of the day, when was the last time you cut a workout short and why? 
today I cut it short really glad I did I'm glad I didn't dig a hole but have you when was the last time you cut your workout short whether it was a track workout a long run maybe what a, any type of workout let us know all right that's it for today I'm going back inside for recovery and I love you guys oh yeah by the way tonight 7 p.m. live stream we're gonna be talking about yes race recovery given that the Boston Marathon is coming up on Monday and then also we're gonna open it up to an open Q&A but also tons of emails coming in so if you emailed me i will do my best to answer your questions tonight 7 p.m live stream also questions via instagram facebook everywhere else everywhere else i love you guys seek beauty work hard and love each other mm. we're gonna make it we are gonna make it